welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, a place where I interview tech leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, futurists, technologists, thought leaders, and even the occasional celebrity about how they are leveraging technology to transform their business. Now, I recently enjoyed a great conversation with GSMA about advancing the 5G era benefits and also opportunities of 5G advance. And today, I want to expand on that conversation by taking your ears on a trip to Stockholm in Sweden, where Olaf Liberg is going to join me on the podcast. And he is a researcher and program manager at Ericsson's Department for Standards and Technologies. Now, Olaf joined Ericsson, I think, way back in 2008 and has specialised in the design and standardisation of cellular radio access technologies. And he's also currently leading Ericsson's 3G PP radio access network standardization team. So I think it's fair to say he knows his stuff. So buckle up and hold on tight because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to Stockholm, Sweden. To, so you can join me and Olaf in conversation today about how the telecoms industry is aligning around 5G advance to efficiently support immersive reality, evolving IoT, sustainability and so much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thanks, Neil. It's a pleasure to join the show. So my name is Olaf Liebay. I'm working for Ericsson. I'm based in Stockholm and I lead our 5G standardization team that's currently working on the next step in the 5G evolution known as 5G Advanced. Fantastic. And you live in a beautiful part of the world, so I'm slightly envious there. But I'd love to take you back in time for a moment before the days of Ericsson. Can you remember where your passion for tech came from or just a moment that put you on the path you're on today and how those worlds of technology and telecoms would, would ultimately collide for you? Uh, that's a good question. It brings back good old memories. Yeah. <laughs> it takes me back 25 years, actually, to the University of Uppsala in the northern parts of Sweden, where I studied a master in engineering, physics and maths. And I believe in the third year we had that class in mathematical transformations. Focus was on the Laplace, the Fourier transform. And we learned about the Fourier transform and its application in wireless communications. And that got me hooked. <laughs> And already then, I still think that wireless communication provides the perfect combination of math and physics for those that are interested in those disciplines. I love that. And that's something that people don't think of. And that's one of the reasons I asked that question, to get you to look under the hood and, and areas that people don't associate with maths and physics. And it's at the heart of everything because people don't think of those things anymore. They just kind of expect everything to work, don't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course, your path would lead you to Ericsson. And can you tell me more about the telecoms industry and how it's aligning around 5G right now? Because again, to a lot of people listening, 5G is the big buzzword and there's a lot of opportunities and promises around it. But what's going on in the telecoms industry around that right now? So as I said then first, and when I introduced myself, I'm working with standardization. Yeah. And I think standards is a great place to understand what the telecom industry is really aligning around. So due to the, um, the pandemic, we haven't met much in the standardization community in the yeah, past three years, I would say. Mm. But in August, I went to Toulouse to meet uh, lots of colleagues, competitors, and friends in the wireless ecosystem in a meeting arranged by the 3 dp organization being the creator of 5G standards. And there we were 500 engineers working on the next step in the 5G standardization, which I said we call 5G advanced. And I think that's a great way of understanding and seeing how um, everyone comes together working towards the same goal in a consensus um, building environment. So yeah, great experience. I would say 5G advanced is the keyword here, what we're all aligning around. And I'm curious, as someone right in the heart of this space that's seen a lot of the exciting things happening, how are you seeing the high speeds and low latency promises around 5G? How do you think that will help businesses almost explore the art of the possible and start thinking differently? Mm, yeah, let's see. When we start working on 5G, is it five years ago? I guess we first addressed the mobile broadband use case where the high speeds, high data rates is key. And, but then we also worked on high reliability and low latency, as you pointed out. It was mainly to address, uh, let's see, industrial use cases. We call it ultra-reliable and low latency communication. 
But now, since a few years back, I would say that the, the focus has shifted slightly towards, yeah, the immersive reality set of services when we discuss the low latency aspects and bounded latency to be more accurate. So, yeah, when it comes to the combination of high speed and uh, low latency, I would say the keyword and the main use case we are targeting is immersive reality. And some of the applications we are studying right now, yeah, at Ericsson and the, I would say the all of the industries, things like cloud gaming, virtual reality, augmented reality. Yeah. Wow, immersive reality and extended reality is, is such big topics right now. How, how many or how far away are we from all this entering the mainstream? Because for some people listening, it feels like it's always like a carrot on the end of the stick just on the horizon. Is, is it going to happen much sooner than people think? Yeah, my perception is that it's happening already. Yeah. And that many of the, the companies active in, in, in the same domain as Ericsson, yeah, and including Ericsson, of course, already have a good offering around extended reality and immersive reality. And uh, now really pushing the envelope and making it even uh, better, faster, leaner. Yeah. Love it. And, and one of the things that excites me is how these emerging technologies begin to converge. And in particular, I would say IoT and 5G stand out there. And so again, how are you seeing the world of IoT evolve? And do you have any, I don't know, any examples or use cases that might excite you that you can share today just to help bring this topic to life? Mm. Yeah, so before I became team lead for our 5G standardization activities, I had I spent quite some years focusing as a researcher on IoT, and it's a topic close to my heart. I think the most ex- or one of the most exciting topics that we are working on right now is called reduced capability devices. It's a work to facilitate a new type of devices for addressing IoT use cases. And I think convergence here, as you pointed out, is a key. So coming back to extended reality, I mean, one can see it as a part of the mobile broadband industry for providing services to consumers like you and me. But one can also see that there's definitely IoT use cases in it. And this reduced capability device work we do, for example, is there to facilitate new cool devices like a smartwatch, smart connected eyewear that you could hook up to an an XR type of service. So yeah, all these things are really coming together in a nice way. And I know you can't mention any names here, but are there any businesses or anything like that that you could share any kind of use cases or or just help people understand where where this could lead to and the kind of things it could unlock, especially around smart cities and things like that too? Yeah, to be honest, what comes to mind is Pokemon Go. I am the father of three kids. And (laughs) since many years, my oldest son, he loves Pokemon Go. So I'm a big fan too. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it would be great if we could take this next step there towards a more immersive experience in Pokemon Go. That would make me and my family happy. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll never catch them all. We just can't no, catch you them don't. all. <laughs> but we're doing our best <laughs> here in Stockholm, yeah. And, and as we said a few moments ago, there's so much hype around the metaverse and extended reality right now. And I know that you're incredibly passionate about this. So what is it that ex- excites you about this space and immersive reality? I mean, being an engineer, I I think the most exciting part is really the technical challenges these uh, applications uh, offer or require. So immersive reality, we associate with high data rates. That's not new, really. Yeah. A short bound and latency, that's not new either, really. But the combination is, is fairly new. So uh, from a, a radio access network perspective, it's challenging to provide a good capacity uh, com- combined with uh, high quality of services, meaning low de- or high data rates and low latency at the same time. And that's really one of the hurdles we are now uh, focused on on addressing in the, in the, in the industry. So uh, yeah, that technical challenge for me is, is what excites me the most in this, this domain. And I was reading before you came on the podcast today, just about every major tech company you can think of from Amazon to Microsoft to Apple and all the usual suspects, Google, of course, they're all working on an AR headset of some description there. So I'm going to ask you to look into your virtual crystal ball here. Do do you think in the future, these type of of AR headsets or glasses or eyewear, et cetera, will eventually replace the smartphone? I know it's a long way off, but do do you think that's, that's the way we're heading? I, I will not expect them to completely re- replace the smartphone. I think the smartphone is here to stay. It's a great invention, but I think it will be a, a really cool complement to the smartphone. 
And I guess we already now see examples where you can actually use your smartphone to kind of connect them to your eyewear. So yeah. <laughs> again, on the on the topic of convergence, but uh, as you said, we really see this this is happening right now. And I hope that the work we do, for example, as I coming back to Redcap again, can really facilitate new uh, cool devices that allows allows us to become mobile, have compact devices that still offers great data rates and these low latencies that are required. And that, I think, is where 5G Advanced really has a role to fill for the extended reality domain. <laughs> and I was also looking at IFA recently in Berlin, and there was so many big new tech gadgets and things for the smart home, etc. But of course, the one thing that stood out to me was we've got expensive gadgets that require energy. And for the most part, I like people haven't got much money and they can't afford to overspend on energy. And one of the increasing focuses we're seeing now for businesses and users like you and I is environmental concerns and ESG scores, etc. So I'm curious, how is the telecoms industry aligning around 5G advance to efficiently support environmental concerns because it's such a, a, a big topic right now isn't it mm. yeah i mean sustainability i guess is a, a key not only in our industry but in the society as a whole i would say when we took the step from 4g to 5g some years back already then the, the focus was really high on a sustainable power efficient and lean networks that has continued but with a focus more on the device side in the recent years and now we again, look more at the network side in 5G Advanced, and we're trying to accelerate the work to make the network even more power efficient, lean. And when I say lean, I mean that we use less transmissions, perhaps transmissions with lower power when we're able to do so, while still facilitating a good end user service, quality of service, and a good experience in the networks. But this is not only on Ericsson's agenda, it's on the agenda of the entire industry, and that will be that were is manifested in the scope of 5G Advanced, where this is, is one of the most important topics that we are working on. Now, as an engineer, I've got to ask this because I suspect that you are have a, a curious mind. You, you see you want to fix problems all the time. So a big question, this one, what keeps you up at night? And also, <laughs> how do you keep that curiosity and open-mindedness alive to, to find solutions to those problems that keep you up at night? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's the kids that keep me up at <laughs> night. But work-wise, I would say the width of the scope that we are addressing now in 5D Advanced leaves me with no option but to be open-minded. So just to make a few examples, right now we're working on integrating artificial intelligence in our, in our networks to make the 5D Advanced Air interface even more efficient. We've all discussed extended reality and all the cool use cases it brings. And we are all even working with satellite communication since a few years back. So in 5 advanced, not even the, the sky is the limit anymore. So, uh, so have to be open-minded to be in this domain. Yeah, you really do. So <laughs> would you say 5, 5G advanced holds the key to, to all of this? The key, I would say. Many of these things, like we discussed, it's in the reality, immersed reality. I, I think that's already happening. Yeah, But it's certainly enhancing it and we're taking the next step in the evolution for providing many of these, these services. Yeah, and, and what's next for you? What's your big focus at Ericsson at the moment? And, and ultimately, what excites you about the road ahead and what's going to be happening over the next 12, 18, 24 months, etc.? Yeah, let's see. If I would look a bit longer into the future, yeah. I, I see 5 Advanced is where halfway through 5G and it's really a stepping stone towards 6G. I mean, in the commercial landscape, I would say 6G is pretty far away still. It, yeah. uh, I would expect that we see commercial 6G systems around 2030, perhaps the earliest. But the standards domain is several years ahead of the, of the commercial market. Uh, so for us working with 5G Advanced, we will do so for a good two, three releases. But then the focus will gradually shift uh, uh, towards 6G. And Ericsson as a company, then, of course, we are already preparing ourselves for that. So the big next thing, I would say, uh, after 5G Advanced for me is, is uh, 6G. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, taking the time to share your origin story, share your insights on where you see this technology heading. But as a little thank you, I'd like to try and offer something to you now. Now, some of the biggest names in business, VC funding and tech, have either been guests on this podcast or listened to the show. So if I was to say, is there a person you'd love to have a private breakfast or lunch with? 
and why, because he or she might just listen to this conversation today. Who would it be? And we'll send it out into the universe and see if we can make something happen. But who would that be? Yeah, let's see. Besides my team lead the role, I'm also still quite engaged in research. And satellite communication has been my my favorite topic or topic where I specialized in the, the past few years. And there's lots of exciting news now being being advertised around satellite communication. So it would be really cool to meet Elon Musk to discuss the latest news about Starlink and their engagement to provide connectivity to smartphone subscribers in the US. That would be really cool. So uh, I hope he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll send this out into the, Hopefully we can make something happen there. All I'll say is if it does happen, just remember who your plus one will be. Okay, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I'll do it. <laughs> But for anyone listening that would just like to find out more information about Ericsson, the work you're doing with 5G Advanced and the technologies you're exploring, or just keeping up to speed with the news, or even contacting your team, what's the best starting point for everything? Okay, both me and Ericsson, we're always available on LinkedIn and Twitter. So for Ericsson, you can just find us at Ericsson Networks, both on both these channels. And then, of course, Ericsson.com is, is always up and running and providing the latest news about the telco world. Well, there's so much I've loved chatting with you today, such as how the telecoms industry is aligning around 5G advanced to efficiently support the immersive reality, evolving IoT, environmental concerns, and sustainability. There's so much going on there, but also bringing it to life with your personal origin story. So just a big thank you for joining me and sharing that with me today. Thanks, Dean. It's been a pleasure. Wow, we covered so much in a short amount of time today, didn't we? But Again, what what has resonated with you? What insights do you have to share about any aspect of our conversation? What is already happening now? Where we're heading in the future? I'd love to hear your insights, experiences, and maybe a few predictions too. And to do that, all you need to do is email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is techblogwriter.co.uk where you'll find over 2,100 other interviews and details of how you can work with me. I know that every podcast you listen to will have a message from your host telling you to please leave a rating and review. But in a world where we're all ruled by algorithms, it really does help the show reach more listeners. So please, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving us a review. I also invite you to come back and join me again tomorrow where we'll dive into another industry and learn how technology is transforming our life, work and world. So a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger.